Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's Alex as usual and um boy, I honestly feel kind of uneasy talking about this game because of how unchill the entire internet was about it. So let me first just quickly get over with the controversial part of the conversation. As long as the game itself is not directly being racist, sexist or any other kind of ist, I will play it and I will review it. The dedicated developers that make the game should not lose their livelihoods just because someone up the chain has unpopular opinions. But in any case, I'm here today to talk to you about some after the hype impressions of what to expect from the game and not to drag any of my viewers into the controversy surrounding JK. This game is something that should have happened years ago and I always wondered about how stupid a company has to be to release games that copy events from the movies and let you play only as the fixed main protagonist when the universe is just so perfectly fit for an RPG where you create your own character, choose your house out of the four, explore and learn spells at your own pace and so on. Too bad it took them so long to realize and act on that golden opportunity. So long in fact that for today's player this game is borderline and generic. But now that it has happened, I am happy to inform you that it actually turned out pretty well. About as well as I have expected. And mostly fulfills the fantasies you probably had reading the books. But there is one thing we should get straight out of the way. If you expected it to be a school simulator, where you can fail a lesson, lose or gain points for your house to win the cup at the end of the year, just chill, it's not that. It's a cookie cutter RPG with a typical story, colored rarity loot, level and talent progression, customization, side quests, dungeons, etc. The story technically has points during which you have a choice that can influence some outcomes, but they are very rare and you can probably count them on the fingers of just one hand. Most of them are just for flavor, but I will get to that just in a bit. Because it doesn't mean that the game is bad or doesn't have the feeling you would expect from attending Hogwarts. I think it should not be a deal breaker for you just yet. So let's get into the details. Here we join Hogwarts during the 1800s. We are a new student that joins late, in the fifth year and has to quickly catch up to all the other students that were already studying for the past years. That's a really good premise since it creates a situation that justifies why you start with no spells and have to acquire them through learning. You can create your own character through a simplistic character creator that while has no way to change the length of your nose for example, it still has a fair bit of preset options, you can mix and match body type and voice type, you can actually even choose whether you should be referred to as a witch or a wizard regardless of your body type. You obviously also choose your house at the sorting ceremony, which is a dream come true. But all it influences is the common room you start at. Here the lack of meaningful choices come into play first. You have no real reason to create a new character for each house. There is no replay value because it's just for flavor. You are not locked out from conversation options, you do not lose access to any side quests or anything. There is literally no difference what house you choose or how you choose to play. And to be fair, I kind of feel like even neither of the two endings had any substantial differences. You are treated by everyone identically, regardless of whether you've been a good boy or Avada kedavra your way through the entire game disregarding any rules about unforgivable curses. But very soon you are let loose in a very big open world area surrounding the castle and it's such a delight that you don't really care about the choices anymore. The world is filled with your usual open world stuff like dungeons, monster lairs, legendary foes, resource gathering, bandit camps, etc. But the fact that it's in this universe, there is just something that makes it feel more special than it really is, you know? Ditching the school uniform for some crazy stylish fantasy outfit you looted from a chest at a dungeon, mounting a hippogriff you tamed and just going off to do the usual stuff, but in a world you dreamed from the books and the movies. If you want that, then this game has that in spades. Every part of what you see and experience in this rather standard RPG is overflowing with this sense of love and attention to detail and lore the developers had. You feel like it's a game made by fans of the universe for fans of the universe. So don't be surprised to see it as many people's Game of the Year nominee for this year. 
As usual, thank you for watching and there is a link to my review article on the website and my social media in the description.